Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of Wirecast Live. I'm Andrew Haley, your host and the live streaming and product evangelist for Wirecast here at Telestream. Uh, for those of you who have been joining us for a while now, we do a live show, uh, Wirecast Live, every Thursday. And we like to invite on content experts as well as people out in the live stream community, people using Wirecast, people using business and internet marketing in interesting ways, and any of the relevant topics we think that you might find useful in your own businesses or your own personal you know, hobbies and live streaming. So today I'm very excited to be joined by a special guest in that area who I'll introduce in just a moment. Um, another exciting thing we're gonna be doing, covering on the show after our interview is what's new in Wirecast 7.3. We just launched this update this week and it is a very, very cool, cool update. So I think you're gonna like what you see. I'll cover some of the top three features uh, that we have in that release and uh, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, so we should uh, have a fun show for you today. Uh, but first, it is my pleasure to introduce Joel Calm. He is an author and speaker, uh, and he is also a very, very expert uh, person at internet marketing. He knows just about everything there is to know and has written several best-selling books on that topic. So we're really pleased to have him join us. He's been very gracious with his time. He's coming to us live from his home in Denver, Colorado, and is joining us over our New Tech Skype talk show machine. Joel, are you there? I'm here. How's it going, Andrew? Ah, I'm doing well. Thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you. You too. And I, I went looking for a wall to put behind me. <laughs> just there wasn't a convenient one. So I don't have to settle for that one. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. And, and, you know, I've always loved that hashtag do good stuff. That mantra you've got going is great. So, um, Joel, tell me a little bit about, uh, why don't, for those of you people who might be joining us or viewing this today, what, uh, can, what do they need to know about you to kind of get an idea of who you are and what you like to do? I just realized I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> you are. You are. Hashtag, I'm fully decked out of my brand. <laughs> That's actually a registered trademark that I own. Oh, this, really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I've been doing business online now. I'm in my 22nd year. I'm a lifelong geek. I was in the computers when the TRS-80 came out back in 1980, and I was dialing in at 300 baud on the, uh, the the modem where you'd have to dial in and you know put the receiver down on. Awesome. The and um, uh, since that time, I've done just about everything that's not illegal or immoral or fattening. Well, maybe a few <laughs> fattening things. Uh, written books. Uh, been on the front lines of social media, internet marketing, um, affiliate marketing, site building, blogging, video creation. In fact, I've been doing live video since Ustream.tv came out uh, back in 2008. Did a, a weekly show for just about two years from my offices. And I've been playing with all the live video apps they've been coming out, you know, starting with Hang With and then uh, Meerkat and, of course, Periscope and Facebook Live and Blab, may it rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, now there's just so many options out there and I'm just having a blast doing it. I get to be a, a live video influencer and, and a brand influencer and, and playing with toys. What's better than that? Mm -hmm. And you got started in radio, right? Got started in radio. Yeah, also got my Oculus Ooh, Rift. So I'm totally awesome. Here. In fact, yesterday I did a live stream. I unboxed the new touch controllers. Awesome. It came out. I'm so curious yeah. to try those. Did a little screen grab and was able to show people what I was seeing through the VR headset. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I did radio back on WPGU Rock 107 FM, Urbana Champagne's Classic Rock, <laughs> back at the University of Illinois. And uh, that led to, after graduation, being a nightclub DJ, which uh, then I discovered that you can make a lot more money if you own your own mobile DJ business mm -hmm. and do wedding receptions and, and uh, class reunions and bar mitzvahs. And so that was my first entrepreneurial venture was uh, as a mobile DJ. And uh, in 1995, I started my internet business and hung up my, uh, my discs back in uh, 96. So 95 internet business, I mean, that that's early days there. You probably had a bit of a hard time convincing clients that this was going to be useful and that this is the way that all business would be done in the future. Yeah, well, I knew it. Mm -hmm. um, there was there was no doubt. Uh, you know, I was online on all the major services: CompuServe, America Online, back before it was AOL, Prodigy, 
Delphi, Genie, Sierra Online, all these were services people paid for before we had a World Wide Web. And it was at the Consumer Electronics Show in January of 95 when the light went on and I realized I got to build a website. So by July of, of 95, I had my first website and it was one of the first 18,000 sites in the world. And I don't even know how many millions of sites we have now. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a hard, you know, road. It, it took us about uh, a year and I got, um, a after about a year, I was almost out of money um, with my content site, but I got contacted by a gentleman in Washington State representing a Japanese multimedia conglomerate whose name I could not pronounce for the longest time. <laughs> now I can say it, Takara Jamisha. Oh, wow. And they, uh, they came to me and wanted to license content I had created to localize on their Japanese um, consumer site. And so I had one of the first licensing deals on the web at that time. And that's uh, that kind of turned the tide and and the deals got more interesting and uh, with more zeros as time went on. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's always the blessing and the curse of being on the front or the bleeding edge of something, right? You're, you're, you know, if you're too far ahead of the wave, nothing's there for you. If you're too far behind, you got to catch the timing just so perfectly. What are some waves that you see happening right now that you would advise people? Probably the timing is pre uh, fortuitous right now. Well, I've been beating the drum for live video now for it's it's almost two years, you know, since Meerkat came out. It was I was there at South by Southwest in March of 2015 mm -hmm. when Meerkat hit. I was one of the people there that streamed for hours and hours, and I knew that we had finally reached the perfect storm for live video. We had the intersection of apps that were easy to use. Um, mass mobile adoption where everybody now have smartphones that were capable of broadcasting and viewing live content and the bandwidth that could handle it. And so seeing that happen, I, I, it was clear to me that the direction that we're going both as content creators and consumers and businesses seeking to reach a wider audience is live video. And so we are in now we've gone from the pioneering to the early adopter phase of what I call the live video revolution. And uh, through to, into 2017, by the end of 2017, we'll begin to hit the beginning of the mass adoption curve. But we're still in the, the early adopter phase. Most brands aren't doing it. And uh, this is the time. This is a, a place for you to build your platform where the uh, playing field is leveler than anything else that you can get into because of the reach of Facebook and of Periscope and soon mobile YouTube Live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you think that, uh, you know, because I've heard arguments to the contrary, I've heard arguments say, well, you know, uh, there's... And I need to play a little bit of a devil's advocate that live content is often not very good. You know, it's often not highly compelling. Uh, there is usually a bit of a limit to the number of viewers that would tune in at any given time. And unless you have something that's a very, very, you know, world shaking event that's happening in real time, you know, and we know those do come along every once in a while where everyone just needs to get on and see real video happening right now, uh, then most of the time you've just left with, you know, kind of shouting out into the internet and people will kind of come and find you once in a while. Uh, but most of your viewers are going to come later on demand. Yeah. You know, uh, I get a lot of viewers on my live videos and you know, it's not always content that I think is going to be compelling. In fact, I did a test last week. I had gotten really furry. <laughs> I let my beard grow for, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks. Yeah, just I, as shaved. Exact, I shaved today just for today's interview. <laughs> <laughs> I shaved live on Periscope and people watched and they interact <laughs> and they engage. So, you know, they said the same thing about radio. Mm hmm. They said the same thing about regular TV and network TV. And then when they said we're going to have cable and one day we're going to have 200 channels, mm -hmm. a lot, most, okay, let's just say this, most of the content, even though professionally produced, that shows up on cable TV isn't worth watching. It's junk. It's, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. And they're spending a lot of money on production. What people are looking for are authenticity, transparency. They want what's real and they want connection. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and all we have to do is look at the success of YouTube vlogging to know that live video is going to go down that same road. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest vloggers are people sitting right in front of their camera 
just talking about whatever's important to them. Right. And that's that's key, that you have to be sharing something that <clears throat> is important to you, that you're passionate about, that you're knowledgeable about, something that will inform, inspire, motivate, entertain. That's what's going to captivate an audience. So to those naysayers, I, you know, I say the same thing um, that I said to those who told me years ago that Amazon would not succeed. <laughs> you're wrong. You're just wrong. And you'll see, time will prove out that you're wrong. Live video is here to stay. <clears throat> and what we've got happening, Andrew, is the lines are getting blurred. Uh, in broadcasting, you know, we used to see TV was ABC, NBC, CBS, and, and PBS in our local network. Right. And then we have cable, and that's TV. And then we have satellite, and that's TV. And then we have Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu, and that's TV. And now we've got live video. And the generation that's coming up now, there won't be a, a way for them to discern. They're not going to categorize them. It's all going to be TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I heard a coworker, very funny coworker uh, Matthew Rare actually. He's uh, the product manager for our Lightspeed Live product, and uh, he was just commenting that you know his kids. Uh, who are pretty young had they um, and at the same things with my kids he says they don't really re they don't know what TV means anymore you know when we had to like go to somebody's house and turn on the the channel they'd say well we don't want to watch this uh, turn on you know our favorite other show and you go they just didn't understand that no this is TV and it it falls out of the sky and you don't get to pick what you watch <laughs> somebody else picks it and because they've just grown up in this environment where they get to watch what they want to watch when they want to watch it exactly you know, when I was uh, when I was younger, we had one of the old, I don't know if it was a Magnavox or whatever, but you'd have to get up out of your seat and walk to the TV and change the channel mm -hmm. and go through, you know, I was in Chicago, so it was 2, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 32. <laughs> and you'd have to go through, you know, to the VHFs and the UHF, and some people have no idea what I'm talking about. And I remember one of the TVs had the remote control. Um, and it was this these clunky buttons that would push in and go ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk for channel up and down. And uh, wow, we've come a long way since then. Mm -hmm. So, what do you see are the exceptional benefits and advantages of live video? Why are you such a proponent of it? What do you think that is going to happen as this revolution takes place, and why is it so important? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, it's, it levels the playing field so that anybody with the technology, all you need is one of these, right? We're sitting at a desktop doing it now with a little bit more sophisticated technology. We're pumping Skype into Wirecast and broad, pushing out to Facebook. But you don't have to have something that's sophisticated. All you have to do is have the application, fire it up, and type in whatever it is you're going to talk about in your live, right? So now it's changing the way we consume um, media and in, is in journalism, right? Now we have citizen journalists that can be on the scene at whatever's happening, wherever it is in the world, far faster than any media organization can get their, their truck there mm -hmm. and a crew there. So now we have the opportunity, whatever it is, whether it's breaking news or something we just want to talk about right now to decide, oh, I'm going to go live and I'm going to have this conversation. I'm going to share this information. I'm going to engage and interact. And so the ability to, uh, to put information out there literally at the speed of sound at the speed of video is something that, you know, we've talked about the, you know, the futurists of 50 years ago might have looked forward and seen it, but we're here. It's mm -hmm. here and now it's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it is a revolution It's changing the way that we consume and create content. Interesting. Um, so in a sense, it, you know, it, the recent movement to put body cams on all police officers, you know, so they're just constantly able to be monitored and do that. It's almost like, in a sense, we're doing that across the world. Anyone with a smartphone is, in fact, carrying around their own documenter, their own communication tool, and could turn it on at any moment and communicate with uh, almost an unlimited number of people uh, at any moment. That's a pretty right. exciting thought. Well, and, and there's a prediction I made on a, uh, a broadcast uh, recently as we look forward to 2017. I think that's what Snapchat spectacles are really all about. Mm -hmm. 
right? They're rolling them out slowly. I have a pair. They are actually shipped to an optometrist that's putting custom lenses in them because I wear a prescription. Otherwise, I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And I think that Snapchat's real move is not the 10-second videos. I think we're going to see Snapchat live in 2017, and you'll be able to broadcast first person, hands-free, mm -hmm. through your spectacles, mm -hmm. the ex whatever experience you are having mm -hmm. as though somebody was there. Mm -hmm. that, is their, that is their big win. If they're not doing this, I'm incredibly surprised because they're very smart. And I think what they're doing with Spectacles is getting people set up to be ready to life cast wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh gosh, this is causing so many interesting questions. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, social media and um, and jump into talking about Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter a little bit because I know you have some thoughts on those platforms. But before we jump into that real fast... I know that uh, Justin.tv really tried the life cast thing early on. Why is it that you think something like Justin wasn't able to succeed? Was it because there wasn't enough you know, content or there wasn't enough uh, interest in that type of content? Well, it's one guy doing 24 hours a day. Nobody wants to watch one person, you know, living all the mundaneness of their life. We want to see the interesting moments. So when I say life cast, I don't mean that people are going to go live, you know, nonstop. There will be some who will, mm -hmm. and there will be fans, you know, of those people. But for most of us, you know, life casting takes place when we have something to say, right? When we have something we want to teach people. Uh, we either want to motivate or inspire them. So one thing, you know, touches the head, uh, the t knowledge, information, and then motivation, inspiration touches the heart. Or maybe we want to entertain. Somebody sings, they can dance, they do magic tricks, they tell jokes, they play guitar, right? Entertainment. And then there's the experiential type of live cast and broadcast that, we can, that we're doing now on streaming. And that's basically says, uh, here's where I am. Here's who I'm with, and here's what I'm doing. And if I feel like that's interesting enough, whatever that is that I want to share it with the world, that's the moment that I go live. Mm, that makes sense. So uh, we actually have that question here in the you know we've got some people tuning in here. So guys, I just want to say thanks for joining us, and you do have some good questions here for Joel. So one question is uh, from Renzo. He's wondering. Do you know if Facebook's planning to let uh, creators monetize like YouTube? Will, they, will we start to see Facebook partners, Snapchat partners? You know, is that I something you I hope so. I would like to see that. You know, for a long time, I've I've been a fan of uh, the bigger sites allowing users to monetize ever since Google AdSense, right back in 2004 when uh, when I jumped on that train. And if you created uh, written content for your website, you can monetize that content with Google Ads. You know, we know that Facebook has uh, a, a huge inventory of advertisements. The difference between them and Google is Google ran their ads on their site, but they also invited you to put on your site. Facebook is all insulated. It's mm -hmm. a walled garden. It's all their content. So the question they might be asking themselves is, why should we pay content creators to be on the site that they're already on? Mm -hmm. Now, if they can find a way to uh, to get people to use that content elsewhere, but that kind of defeats it's their own purpose of wanting to keep people in Facebook. I would like to see it happen. We know that they're paying some content creators, right? They, they budgeted several million for a handful of influencers, brands, and publications to create live video mm -hmm. on Facebook. I'm not sure how far they're going to continue it. I'd like to see it because mm -hmm. who doesn't want to get paid? Yeah, and at the same time, the it's a, it's an interesting point that you make there. They could go either way with it because they're they're so big already, and people are already using their site that they may never need to pay that much money to anybody because they'll get enough content just by not necessarily trying to pay anyone in particular. But incentivizing creators to do better with you know the better they do, the more fans they pull in, the more they can make is a big deal. And I think the YouTube model was uh, pretty strong in that sense and has supported yeah. a lot of people that way. It's also, of course, created more of a competition environment. So more people are like, hey, I want to do that. And that just makes it easier for you know uh, places like Facebook or YouTube to, to capitalize on that. Right. Um, so 
uh, let's talk about Snapchat. Uh, okay. they, you mentioned the spectacles, and I think that's a very good, uh, timely example because that is their new product that they're launching. I think you'll see some exciting stuff with it. Uh, and, and Snapchat recently said that they uh, consider themselves a camera company. They don't consider themselves a social company. In fact, that's kind of their jobs to make awesome you know, cameras and communication tools like that. Do you see some truth in that? Uh, I, I also want to add... I just add, snapped you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect timing on that. Do you see um, some truth to that? Do you see Snapchat? I mean, how, how's the... Because Snapchat and Facebook have this contentious relationship. And, and yeah. uh, I've just read some predictions that Facebook's really coming in to eat a lot of Snapchat's good ideas and just just scale them faster and do them bigger. Well, yeah, they can eat all the ideas they want. In fact, is Snapchat has a significant user base. Um, they are ahead of the curve and in innovating uh, every aspect of what it is they do. You know, uh, Facebook has come along and with Instagram stories, Instagram is competing a bit and we're going to see more Snapchat like functionality in um, in Facebook itself, in Messenger. But the key here is that Snapchat pivoted and they pivoted in a way that I don't think Facebook or anybody else saw. They turned it, they're basically a hardware company, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's why I think they have an opportunity if they roll out the, uh, the ability for people to go live on spectacles. Facebook is going to have to hustle because now Facebook needs to be a hardware company, mm -hmm. right? The app yeah. isn't enough. Ha anybody can stream from the phone. Look, I can stream from, you know, what I'm wearing. Right. That puts Snapchat way ahead of the curve, assuming they roll this thing out right. I think they're they're messing up a little bit right now. The, Why is uh, that? The, well, first of all, their promotion for rolling out spectacles was brilliant. You know, they they dropped this vending machine that's very Snapchatty, big yellow box with the you know the camera in the middle, into very specific locations each day, and they've got people waiting six, eight hours <laughs> to get their hands. Now, I would not do that if it were not for a friend, um, Todd Bergen, who mm -hmm. acquired a pair for me. I wouldn't have one mm -hmm. right now, um, so I'm grateful. Thank you, Todd. Shout out for that. Uh, but it's time to quit with the shenanigans. The promotion should be over. These should be available to order directly through the app last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time to get the, the demand is there. Now, the only reason I could think that they've not done it is they are preparing for the IPO and they want to show, they want to book the revenue for what undoubtedly is going to be a huge launch when they roll it out to the public mm -hmm. for right before an IPO. But that's going to take a while mm -hmm. still. So I just think they need to get it over with. And frankly, if, if I was there on the advisory board, I would have said, look, the holidays are coming. The time was last week right. to make these available to public. It would be the biggest holiday gift, gift of the yeah. holiday yeah. season. No question. So I don't get it. Uh, but when they finally do pull it off, it's going to be pretty magical. Yeah. I, I would say that the uh, IPO guess is a very, very good one because I could only see that as their best strategy for competing with Facebook. Uh, is to get a but big why wait? chest. Exactly. Why, why wait? Why not just take the leap right now? Because every day that they're not is giving uh, Facebook opportunity. And now the que this begs the question, what does Facebook do? Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. they launch their own version? I mean, what, what other item could you wear? You know, what else would be a tech wearable that would be as easy as glasses, mm -hmm. a hat, a headband, Mm. You know, a little something you clip onto your body. No, the glasses make the most sense. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if they are going to keep stealing ideas from Snapchat, which they are, mm -hmm. Mr. Zuckerberg, let's face it, that's what you guys are doing. You're ripping off Snapchat to try to keep up with them. Then it's got to be glasses of some kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, I mean, it would be interesting to see where this all plays out because obviously Facebook acquired uh, Oculus. Uh, they are a little bit in the hardware business with that. Uh, and then we've got other interesting players coming soon, I think, with, you know, in the next five years, I would assume, but uh, with the Magic Leap, where, you know, you're going to start to see uh, uh, much easier wearables than uh, the one you're currently uh, demo uh, modeling for us right now. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the brick phone of <laughs> VR goggles. It really is. Now, this is this is fun stuff. Every time I have somebody over, they try these on. Mm -hmm. 
um, and they're blown away. It is the experiences are fantastic, and it's just the beginning of what's coming. But it's a big device, right? Still, I mean, it's not that heavy. It doesn't hurt my head or neck to wear it. But we're going to be seeing very thin lenses, just like we went from these big tube television sets to you know LED and flat plasma screens. And, you know, even the monitor I'm on here right now is about, you know, maybe an inch thick and it's eight years old. Right. So the others are even thinner. I've got one that's a half inch over here next to me. And so those are coming and, uh, you know, it won't be in the too distant future that VR, AR glasses rather than goggles will be what we're using. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think that the AR, um, you know, because it, it shouldn't be too difficult uh, to jump from an AR model to a VR, I mean, a VR model to an AR model at some point. But I think you're right that could, the next sort of competition is going to be right around this wearable right here because nobody's going to want to be picking up their phone all the time. I'm already tired of handling my phone all the time and pointing it at things. I just want to have a hands-free system. What we're going to see happen, you know, as we look forward to 2017 is uh, I've been hearing some people say, well, AR is going to um, going to re be faster than VR, mm -hmm. faster to market. I disagree. I think VR is the low hanging fruit for consumers to buy from an entertainment perspective. And we're going to see smaller units and lower prices by this time next year. So I'm going to say that we're going to be at the early adopter phase for virtual reality by Christmas 2017. And the must have gift is going to be a unit for your PlayStation, for you know, a HoloLens, for your Xbox, something for the Nintendo. And by 2018, that's when we're going to really hit mainstream with VR. Mm -hmm. AR is going to have more um, uh, real world applications. Right. Rather it's than a bigger market. Right. Medicine. Um, construction, interior design, anything that will help people to plan their lives, right, to, to live better is going to be more practical from an AR perspective. But the VR is, uh, is for enhancing our lives with entertainment. It's a luxury. Yeah, it's a good point. The, uh, um, I would say that the, the another, another question, another social media platform that everyone's curious about its current fate and you have some thoughts on this is twitter what the heck is going on with twitter are they going to be around in two years how can they not be around uh twitter is more enmeshed and ingrained and ensconced all the n-words uh <laughs> in our culture than any other uh any other site that's struggling mm -hmm. right tumblr could go away and the world would go on. Right. Flickr could go away. MySpace went away. Did you know they're back? <laughs> you know, um, Facebook would impact people, but it's, they're not struggling. Um, Twitter is struggling, and the share price continues to fall. I have zero faith in the leadership. I don't. I think it was a huge mistake when they brought Jack Dorsey back. You need um, outside influences to come in who aren't so close to it to be able to go back to the basics of what made Twitter Twitter to begin with. Uh, I think. Think that they had a huge faux pas when they removed social sharing counts from the sharing buttons last, this year, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden you would tweet and you don't know how many others are tweeting. I, I just do not understand the wisdom of removing social sharing proof from your social sharing buttons. It makes no sense. And uh, I think the best thing that Twitter has going for them is Periscope, which needs to be fully integrated with the Twitter experience itself, either mobile or desktop, mm -hmm. call it Twitter Live, get rid of this name Periscope, it's not necessary. And I think what's gonna happen is because Twitter doesn't have a business model that's proving to be successful, they need to be a media company. Mm -hmm. And I believe, uh, you know, I'm not a, a stock analyst, uh, so this is just uh, from the hip, but what I've been saying is that Twitter's gonna fall to somewhere in the 10 to $12 range. I think it's at 18 now, you has been slowly plummeting. I've heard some and estimates as low as five. Well, that might be the case, but I think that they're going to get bought around the $10 range. Mm -hmm. I think a, a media company is going to swoop in wherever the bargain basement price is and go, the installed user base of Twitter is ubiquitous. We have right. at usernames. We have hashtags embedded in news and TV shows and magazines and billboards and movies and everybody understands it. It would be foolish 
for it to completely die. Somebody who is media savvy is going to come in and they're going to turn it into a media channel that has uh, in interaction and engagement from its users. And I think that's how Twitter um, lives on and prospers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes sense. I think that uh, one of the things that uh, was, as you said, when they brought Dorsey back, my feeling on that was that the main issue was that he was trying to to sit in two chairs with the same uh, with the same rear end. He was trying to head up two companies at the same time, and you just there's no way to turn around a company that's failing with only part of your attention. Right? Yeah. Twitter. You know, Twitter's always been a happy accident. Okay. It's kind of a clown car. Uh, you know, they say even a blind dog finds a bone from time to time. And this little microblogging experiment that they put out there, say, what are you doing? And you, you answer in 140 characters was really a happy accident. And it was the third party developers that they gave access to the API all those years ago that grew the following. Well, then what happened? They shut, they shut the third party developers out. Mm -hmm. He, I don't understand it. It makes no mistake. It's saying, oh, we have data now. We're going to protect it. Well, in your protectionism, you became isolationist. Right. And it's time to go back to the basics. What made Twitter Twitter in the first place? Yeah, no, it was always the, the social, it was kind of the open system to Facebook's closed system. And, and you've got to have both. One is useful for one thing and one is useful for another. And you don't, you, they both can't be each other. Because so I, I don't see Twitter just shutting down. They're mm -hmm. not going to one day go, we're not making any money and we're bankrupt. Right. I, I just, right, right. Somebody's going to come in. You know, the, the, um, the fields were kind of tested, right? Because we had Salesforce. We had Disney. Um, what was the other one? Uh, Somebody else. Yeah, I know who you're thinking. But Another yeah. big name was looking at it. And was then it they all backed maybe? Sure. Uh, it might have been Microsoft. They all backed off at the 18 to $20 price. They're like, uh, no, we don't see it. But there will be, they'll be back. Somebody will be back or, or somebody new will show up that's media savvy. They'll buy it. They'll say, Jack and the rest of the team, you're out. Um, Kayvon at Periscope, we, you, we, have no, we no longer have use for this. We're going to run this thing. It's going to be Twitter Live. We are a broadcast media channel now. And that's when they're going to be able to start putting advertisements in the video as they become that channel. Uh, you know, I believe smart TVs in 2017 will start having a Facebook Live button right there next to Netflix mm -hmm. and Amazon mm -hmm. and Hulu. And if Twitter's smart, whoever purchases ends up with Twitter, they will turn it into a channel as well that will also appear on the smart TVs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, how does somebody find content on Facebook? I feel like that's one of the hardest problems to get exposed to content you might be interested in, but you don't know what's out there and you're not friends within the two degrees or something that the live video is going to appear in your feed. Yeah, so well, you I feel that's a big challenge. You have to like it. It is. Now, one of the smart things that Facebook has done is in the uh, in the Facebook app, mm -hmm. they've shuffled the buttons around. And of course, the second one at the bottom now, and I'm waiting for the app to come up, is, um, let's see if you can see the second button. Ah, where is it, Joel? There we go. That play Coming button. In there. The yeah. The, the number right yep, yep. There, 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 there it is. So when you pull that up, it shows you people that you're following um, and the videos that they've got that are live right now mm -hmm. um, and uh, pages. So that's kind of a good way to do it. That's that's one way to discover. Yeah. Do you think that um, uh, if somebody's starting out today on Facebook Live, what are some of the, you know, key things they should do to build their audience. I, I, I've found that some people stagnate at, you know, just a few thousand or a few hundred. What is it that they're not doing correctly uh, in, in order to get that next tier of, of level of viewership? Well, first of all, make sure you have a message, that you have something to say. Uh, we're not all broadcast professionals. We're not all naturals. Uh, but, you know, when you're getting on camera to capture attention, you can't just be going, hey, What's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm just on Facebook Live. Next, right? <laughs> Attention span blown. You've missed it. So you have to engage. You have to talk to people. Don't look at yourself. See, right now I'm looking at my screen. But where is the audience? Right. Oh, you guys are right there. 
Look at the audience, look at the camera. Same thing on your phone, whether you're doing videos or taking selfies, don't look at the screen, look at the camera. Because that's where your audience is. And make sure the content you have is compelling. At least be passionate about it. Whatever that content is, if your passion can overcome uh, the uh, the value of the content sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Two people, one of them's passionate, one's not, same content, people are going to want to watch the person that's passionate. Ask people to like your video. Ask them to comment and engage with them. When you're doing live, you have an opportunity that you don't in pre-recorded right, to right. watch the comments and respond back to them and ask them to share to their page. And remember, that's what viral marketing is really all about, Andrew. There's no such, you don't go and say, I'm going to create a viral campaign. That's not what happens. What we are is storytellers. And whether your story is educational, motivational, inspirational, entertaining, experiential, whatever it is, the goal of, of storytelling is to tell a story so compelling that others will want to retell it. Mm. That's what viral marketing is. If enough people say, wow, I got to share this with others. This is amazing. They should be watching this live with me or they should be watching the replay. That's how viral marketing takes place. So see yourself as a storyteller that is sharing your story with the world and you want that story to be so compelling others will retell it for you. That is a very, very good way of putting it. I've never thought of it in terms of storytelling uh, because it is. It absolutely is. And whether or not uh, it's going to get shared is directly related to how compelling of a story is it and how much do people actually want to share it with others and I think that that is the key to marketing these days uh, it's no longer that you can just pay a bunch of money and get on front of millions of viewers and suddenly you're successful it doesn't work that way anymore unless you just happen to have a few million dollars lying around and for a lot of political candidates even when they do do that it's not compelling enough well so. you know let, let's talk about that for a moment without you know uh, supporting or not supporting whichever side the spectrum you're on what, what Donald Trump did in this election was brilliant because he used Facebook Live to go directly to the people and spent a fraction, a fraction of what um, the Clintons, you know, they spent over a billion dollars on their campaign and he didn't get anywhere near that because he used the tools that were available to go directly to the people. And so that is really good news for any of us to know that, hey, we don't have to spend a lot of money. We just have to have a compelling message and know our audience to be able to use live video successfully. Right, right. It makes sense. Uh, so speaking of engagement, folks, uh, looks like we have a few people in the house that uh, some familiar faces and names. Vincenzo Landino has popped in. Vincenzo. And we have Matt Gonzak in the house. He wants us to uh, Twitter to bring back the fail whales. Uh, <laughs> Twitter's had its share of fail whales already. It's time <laughs> to stop failing, Twitter. And uh, let's see. So, and then Juan uh, Juan Pablo uh, is checking in as well. So, guys, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. So, Joel, uh, you've been very generous. We're reaching about forty-five minutes here. It's been it flew by. There's just so much cool stuff to talk about with you. So, we're gonna have to have you on again. Um, before we go, is there any place uh, any place that people should find more information about you? Um, you did mention that we need to ask people to share these, share these broadcasts. So I think I'm going to start working that into my own appeals to our viewers. Um, but where can people go to learn more about you and share your stuff? Well, I, I, anywhere you go, I'm at Joel Com. I believe I'm the only Joel Com in the world. And so uh, probably that's probably best for the world. <laughs> so on Twitter, at Joel Com, also on Periscope, Snapchat, Facebook is where you're going to find me. And, uh, and of course, I do, uh, I, I do own the Do Good Stuff brand. And if anybody's interested in, in having a Do Good Stuff shirt or uh, my trademarked ka -ching buttons. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get one of these because they're fun make excellent christmas gifts yeah i bet they're on amazon just look up ka-ching button all right c-h-i-n-g i will do that i will i'll have to get one here i'm in the studio I'll try it out until people uh tell me that they need it to stop <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets sick of ka-ching you, know, you, you can only hear that was easy so many times yeah it's true but you know entrepreneurs they just i, I actually got them i had them made to go with my book Kaching as a promotional uh, mm -hmm. effort, and people are like, "How do I get one of these?" We mm -hmm. just made them for review, so I manufactured more, and they sell on Amazon like clockwork every day because people great. love 
Ka-ching. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to talk to you. I have uh, a few ideas for some other types of buttons, so we'll have to talk. Um, all right, Joel. Well, you've been great. Thanks so much for joining us today. And folks, we just didn't have time to cover all the topics that Joel has stuff to say about. So, Joel, uh, we will definitely invite you back and Bonky you bog. have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk Thanks, to you Andrew. soon. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. So for those of you who are uh, still here, we're going to cover Wirecast 7.3. Uh, so thanks um, to Joel for joining us. That was a great interview. I had a great time talking with him. And uh, you know, if you guys do have questions for him, we can pass those along. Uh, you can also, of course, reach out to him directly on his social media channels. Uh, but let's talk a little bit, let's shift topics here, and let's talk about our most recent uh, release of Wirecast. Wirecast is... Um, currently clicking along. It's on its third or fourth dot release or update for our big massive seven release. And we um, keep just improving things, particularly on the Facebook live front. So I think you're going to be excited to see what we've done here. So what I'm going to do is pull up my desktop and just show you a few of the things that you should get familiar with when uh, using Wirecast and the newest version. So if you haven't updated 7.3, I would recommend that. We did push that update out to all you viewers, um, all, all Wirecast users. So you should get a ping from the app letting you know that a new version is available. Available. And if you are uh, curious about what it is, we usually put the sort of the highlight features in this sort of welcome window. So you can see here and the ones that you're probably going to be most interested are in on this release are our real time Facebook viewer stats, our image playlists or the new image carousel source. And then of course, the ability to import OBS scene collections. So if you've been someone who's been using OBS, uh, for a while now and you've got all this work and done all these projects and you just don't want to have to recreate all of that from scratch in Wirecast. We've made it really easy for you to pull in those projects. Uh, and then the other ones are um, going, I'll actually just demonstrate them. I don't have OBS scenes I can import, but I'll show you where that is in the app. So let's just take it from the bottom. We'll start with OBS, then we'll talk about the image playlist, and last we'll talk about the Facebook stats. So I'm just going to open this empty document. And as you can see, I have nothing in my hands. No, it's the standard uh, magician's talk here. So we have a just a normal black a blank document. Uh, and you'll notice that if you, for example, had OBS scenes or you had a bunch of OBS projects you wanted to convert or import into Wirecast, it's just found up here in the new file open. You're going to open the OBS scenes. What you can't do at the moment is you cannot import them into an existing Wirecast file. So you're not going to be able to merge OBS scenes with a Wirecast document uh, because it has to be opened as a brand new document. So if you click uh, open OBS scenes, it'll ask you, it'll actually take you right to the correct folder if you have OBS installed on the machine and it'll open any of your scene collections that you want. But they will get opened as a Wirecast document themselves. At that point, you can start building it out with any of the Wirecast uh, things you need to add. But as far as the basics, you need to start from the scene collection itself and save that as an individual file first. So there's no way to import it, say, save a Wirecast document and then import the scene collections. You're going to have to just open them. Then it does the conversion, creates a new Wirecast project. You can save that and from there you can add whatever you need to add. All right, so next up we have um, what I'm going to do here. Let's talk about the image playlist. So this is the new image carousel source and uh, I can even just add it here if we want on the timeline or the uh, shot list here. And uh, you'll find it right here. It's uh, about the sixth item down. Uh, and just click image carousel. That's going to open the source configuration for this particular type of source. Should be familiar with this. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there are two images just to give you an idea of how it works to start with uh, that just are loaded in. And you can see it's just a rotating slideshow. You can set the dimensions to whatever you want. So we could do a 1280 by 720. And we can even choose how often we want the image to change. So I'm going to start with just five seconds. You can also choose how long you want it to fade in. I'm going to have a one second fade. You choose whether you want to shuffle. The next thing you need to do uh, is add the images. So you're going to click, sorry, this dot, dot, dot button here, and you could say, add whatever images you like. 
we've got Wirecast gear, the sports image, we've got this, and we've got that gear. So why don't we add those? And then I'm gonna open those. I'm also going to add just some of those logos here. And hit OK. And it's going to just load into a playlist here. You can then organize them however you like. I probably don't want both those next to each other. So just click the arrow buttons to move these around. And hold on, let me grab. I'm having trouble here. My large arrow is useful for, hold on, do that. And keep going down a little bit. All right. Eventually, these will be draggable, but uh, for now, um, it is just use the arrow buttons to reorganize them. You can use the X to cancel any of them. And that should be it. We've got our playlist of images. They're loaded up. It gives us the size that's going to do it, and then it's going to auto fit those into that and fade into each one. So hit OK. And if we were, and at that point, the carousel is just rolling. It's just a basically an image playlist that's going to keep going. The nice thing about it, though, of course, is that you can now scale it however you want, reposition, rotate it, and so forth, uh, and even change the opacity, and it's going to do it for all the images in the playlist. So whether you want it full screen or whether you want it just as a little animation up in the corner is up to you. You can then take it there. You can, of course, add uh, a shot you know, below it, like we could add, say, our camera here. I'm going to add just the video camera there. Throw on a chroma key super quick. And actually, I'll leave that on so you can kind of see everything. Let's go back and just reorder it so it's below. And now you can see those images are going to appear up in the corner there. And they are, you know, it's just a nice way to have you an animated series of images if you want. Uh, and again, full screen or not your decision. Take that live. You can see we've got those images. Good. So it's going to rotate. If you want to, of course, jump back in, change any of the settings, delete images, you can do all that. You can add more. All that's going to be available to you in the, uh, the object properties tab here. Uh, and you can change as needed. So that's the image carousel, a very handy little quick slideshow. It only does fades, and it does actually a combination of a fade and stretch to fit. So if the images are different sizes, they will kind of, you can see it kind of morphing as they fade in. They'll uh, um, stretch to fill whatever the size settings that you set are. And then if the next image is smaller, they'll, it'll squeeze down and, and go to that. So it's always going to be a stretch to fit, either in the vertical or the horizontal position and then uh, it will fade it in and fade the other one out. So it gets this kind of cool morphing effect. If you were to choose images all of the exact same size then you probably won't have that stretching. I haven't tested that yet so you can find out for yourself if that's curious. Uh, Wirecast 7.3 will be available on the Gearbox. All Wirecast gears have Wirecast gear uh, sorry, Wirecast software installed. So it's just like updating your normal Wirecast software. When you open the software on your Wirecast gear, it will uh, just download the update. Uh, the current, obviously, the current Wirecast gear models that have been uh, shipped have 7.2 on them. Uh, so, you know, when we do the next production run, uh, we'll put 7.3 on. Uh, but for those of you who might have a 7.2 on there, you know, when you open Wirecast, it'll just ask you to upgrade or update. So that shouldn't be a problem. All right, so let's talk about, uh, and good to see you there, Eric Lutz. Good to see you joining us. Thanks for joining us. Glad you liked the interview. Uh, Derek, good to see you. And Alfredo, that was a good question. All right, so um, stick around. I'm going to show you guys the new uh, Facebook Live tally counters. So let's see if we can get some cool um, counters here. I'm going to post this link. Um, we'll see if we can just, you guys can uh, can spike this tally count. So I'm going to go to our, um, let's go to our output settings. We're going to add Facebook Live as our destination. And authenticate here. I'm going to go to my notes, I'm going to do it. So, 
Genius one. And then let me grab the password. Okay, we're gonna log in. And what I'm going to do is just stream it to my you know profile page here. So that shouldn't be a big deal. We'll stream it to the profile, hit public, and we're just going to create that. I'm going to call this um, tally counter test. And I'm not even going to enter a description. We'll hit create, hit OK. We've got 720. I'm going to do Apple H264, so we can use that. Hit OK. And I'm going to save real fast. Let's call it my document. We'll replace that. Looks like I already have one. All right, we'll start streaming here. And I'm going to go grab that link. And I'll share it in the comments here. And you guys can go see this stream. And then once we start seeing, you can see our first tally counters on there. It's our total viewers. So let's see if we can get one viewer tuning in here. Let me go grab it. Oh, hold on. Search. All right, there we go. Let's see if we are live here. Hold on. Let's see. Gonna search for it real fast. I might need to share it to a more publicly available profile here. I'm going to, I'm just doing some searches, but my uh, computer is, of course, beginning to chug a little here because it's just a little Mac Mini. TS. Stream test. Okay, should we work? Let's see here. We'll pull this up, see if we can do it. I might be able to stop the stream and start it to a different profile so we can find it here. Let's go to output settings. I'm going to change to a different here. We're going to log into to Let's see, it gets five. And let's see, I think it's going to be. All right, guys, this may be a little bit trickier um, than I thought. But in any case, once you start streaming, you can start doing the um, the counters will start ticking depending on what the, which counters apply. So if someone adds a live streaming, like a smiley face or a heart emoji, then you'll start seeing counters or tallies for each one. Uh, the view count will be the first one you see because that's obviously what is being returned, but there's nothing to return for the other counters. So we don't want to fill up your user interface without it. Um, the uh, So it just depends on what you 
personally decide. Um, I'm going to see if I can have this send me a text real fast and I can get my email. This um, password that I use sometimes is has changed a couple times. So there we go. I can recover this. Do. All right, let's try this again here. Okay. Cool. I think we're good. I'm going to now authenticate here to the correct account. And we'll do this, see if we can, I can post the link here, so. Perfect, okay. So I've logged in, we've got the new test here. We're going to create it, hit create, hit okay, start streaming. And now I should be able to share this link. It's actually going to be streaming on my profile here. Uh, just having some chugging problems here. This is going to chug a little bit. Hold on. Let's stop that. Refresh the page. But you should be able to find this if you search for Andrew Haley, H-A-L-E-Y, on Facebook. Should be live right now. We'll see if we can pull in some viewers. Oh, man. This poor computer is really chugging. Let's go to my timeline. There we go, we got some notifications. Here we go, we're live. I'm gonna post the link here. I will grab it, show URL, grab this. And so you can see, uh, just so I can pull this on my screen, you can see we're right there. And I'm going to post this in the chat here. There we go. So you can now see the link. If you click on that, we should start to see the tally count change based on who's watching. So I'm going to close that so my computer isn't completely useless. One of my Christmas wishes for, 2000, for, for Christmas is a new demo machine. So demo gods, give me a new demo machine. This uh, Mac mini is not quite up to the job. But let's see if we can get some new viewers. So anybody, if you're still out there, click on the link. I posted it in the comments, so you should be able to see it. And uh, we let me know or comment back here if you're already watching it. And we'll see, or even leave a comment on that stream. And we'll see if we can get some, um, some up-to-the-minute feedback up here in this Facebook Live tally counter area. So leave, you know, uh, a like, like a thumbs up, or leave a heart emoji, or whatever it is, and that should, I'm going to move me out of the way here, and then we should see a new, um, new, emo new counters appear as they become relevant. That's okay, we still, um, I understand that may not be working for everybody. Let's try this. I'm going to try comment. I'm actually commenting on my own stream here. So we'll see if we get a uh, feedback here.
Okay, so that is where it should be working. If you guys have problems with that or if you have questions about it, let me know how it works for you. This, in this case, because I'm leaving comments on my own and I don't fully trust this demo machine, I can't for certain say whether or not um, everything's working as it should. I would think that because I liked my own broadcast and I left a comment on my own broadcast, the new tallies should appear, but I don't entirely trust that. I also don't know how often Wirecast will be checking to see if you have new tallies uh, or if new things have changed. So I, I'm actually curious to see how often Wirecast queries the live API to get those new tallies back. Um, APIs like Facebook will often limit how frequently applications can check or ask for new information. So there may be a limit to how often those tallies can be updated. All right, that should do it for today. Those are the three big new changes in Wirecast 7.3. There's more information in the release notes. You can also find you know, the number of bug fixes that we've done if you're curious about that end of things. I'm not going to cover any of that today. But uh, thanks to everybody for watching. I'm just going to peruse real quickly through your comments here just to make sure I didn't l miss any uh, last questions before we sign off for today. It appears that the link isn't working, says Derek. That's a bummer. I wonder if that link... Hmm. You know, it's funny is I can't even find the link that I added. It's, okay, there it is. Found it here. It's funny, it works for me when I click on it. It takes me straight to my page. Let me try one other method here. I'm going to pull it up full screen. I'm going to show the video our URL. Let's try this one more time. It may be that you have to be friends with this account to see it. I'm not sure. This account might be. Let's try that. Uh, Deborah Lee, do you? Have uh, how's the counter working in the studio there? That's fine. That's fine. But it's updating pretty regularly for you. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. Okay. So it might just be something going on with my computer here, or the fact that this account is so isolated. It has no friends. It's just an account that I created solely to manage the Wirecast page. Uh, so if you have, um, so it could be something to do with that. But um, sorry if that link wasn't working. Um, it is a public stream, Lutz. I don't know why it didn't work uh, exactly, but we'll see. Any support for YouTube comments yet? Not yet. Uh, I think you'll see that coming down the road, uh, but I couldn't say when yet. So, uh, Renzo, but it's a good question. I think that Facebook Live tallying and commenting and kind of keeping track like um, is, is just the first step, and then we should be adding uh, other APIs as uh, we can. So that um, will be cool to see. But for now, I uh, just want to say thanks for tuning in. Sorry if... Uh, if uh, there was a bit some technical hiccup there. Uh, it was just impossible to find that test account, and I don't always remember my passwords off the top of my head. Uh, so I needed to reset that account and get to a different account where I actually could find that account because I didn't set up that, that Telestream test account. So it's a little bit harder to work with and um, probably harder to share those URLs. Okay, well... It's been another fun, very long episode. I think we covered a lot. We'll probably chop this up into a couple different bits and pieces so that we can share them out and you don't have to uh, go through the whole episode if there's certain pieces of information or if you just want to find out what's new in 7.3 or you just want to watch the interview with Joel. Um, but for now, that's what we're doing. Next week, stay tuned. We're going to be interviewing David Foster from the Live Streaming Pros. That should be a fun interview as well. David has a lot of experience doing this day in, day out, week in, week out, uh, and we should have a fun conversation. Uh, they had me on their show uh, a month or so ago, about two months ago now, and I uh, had a great time talking with David, so I'm looking forward to uh, turning the tables on him and having him in the hot seat and asking him some questions. So that should be a fun interview. And then after that, I think we are pretty much off and through the holidays. 
uh, and we should be back after that. And we'll have a whole new season of content coming up for 2017, so that should be a fun year with lots of good stuff to share with you guys. Uh, so we'll keep stepping up our game and hopefully making sure our demos work a little better. I'll have to run through that a little smoother next time. I did not actually set that up ahead of time, as you could probably tell. I just figured if I started streaming, the comments would work just fine. But then I realized there was nobody there to actually comment, so I needed to... Uh, to get you guys more engaged on that. So I'll try that again another time. I'll make sure that uh, maybe our demo machine is a little beefier and then I can uh, share that link out with you guys on an account that might be more available or publicly uh, so we can try to test some of that feedback and you can see it in action. The other option, of course, is we could share a screen capture of our studio computer of this very broadcast you're watching right now and you can see as you leave comments, the tally's changing. But in any case, that should be a fun demo once we get it set up. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. Another episode of Wirecast Live in the Can and I wanna thank you all for watching, for commenting and I'll see you next week. I'll, as always, we appreciate you. Uh, please share and like this page and share with your friends and we will try to uh, continue to create great content particularly around live streaming and wirecast so thanks so much i'll see you next week